Welcome to another X1D review in this video series. This time I will focus on can you use the X1D as a walk around everyday camera? Usually not territory for medium format. The X1D is a 50 megapixel digital medium format camera. That's about the size of a Leica SL, a little smaller, a little bigger than a Sony A9. It's lightweight, it's beautiful, it's attractive, it's probably the best feeling camera I've ever held in my hand. Um, the Hasselblad X1D is not cheap, comes in at $89.95, but you get that stunning medium format quality in the palm of your hand and you can shoot it anywhere in any light, uh, take it anywhere because of its size. Uh, the size is small and light, unlike the Fuji GFX system that has recently come out. You can see that the Fuji system, if you add the grip, the viewfinder, it's, it's a lot more bigger and bulkier. So that's not something I would be inclined to take out. So this is focusing on the X1D, but remember, this is not my review. You can see that at stevehuffphoto.com. Here's some photos in daylight. First one, nothing special, but it kind of shows you the color and dynamic range. This is a straight from camera shot uh, with pieces of bright sun hitting the wall with some pieces of shade. Uh, it was shaded by a tree, but we show some dynamic range here. The next photo is Debbie, and this is wide open at f3.5 with the 45. Beautiful rendering, again, the dynamic range, the highlights in the back, even though it was full Arizona sun, they're not blown out. I converted this to black and white. Next, we'll see a color version of the same file. Uh, I made this one kind of warm. Um, I added some color tone to it. This is not straight from camera. The X1D files give you a lot to work with. Um, the huge dynamic range, you can play with these files as much as you want. They're super hardy, super tough, meaning you can add color, boost color, save highlights, bring out highlights, bring up shadows, um, add filters. Um, you have a lot to work with uh, with the X1D files. Again, 50 megapixels. Here's one of a dog I just shot. You can see the background did blow some, but I didn't try to save it. This is pretty much right from the camera, but I'm gonna zoom in on the dog's face. You can see the way this camera renders light. Uh, and this is just, you know, a silly dog shot, but I'm gonna show you an even sillier shot next. So here's a shot I was doing just to test uh, something interesting. I wanted to see how far I can push it with filters and, and all that fun stuff. So I pulled up some plugins and I made this out of the photo. I gave it a more spooky, creepy look. It's just a collectible living dead doll or whatever they're called. I had a bunch of them in a box in the garage. So you can see the big difference after you edit a file for your intended purpose. This next one is like ISO 25,000. Uh, myself, I took it in the mirror. You can see the black and white tones that the X1D produces are quite nice. As a matter of fact, they remind me a lot of the original like a monochrome, but with much more dynamic range, which was that camera's weak spot. The color coming out of the camera is fantastic. This is 98% accurate, I would say. It's in my backyard. And yes, these are that bright green. They're not dull, like some cameras would produce it. Um, it might boost the color a teeny bit, um, but maybe by 1%. This is pretty accurate. Here we are having two orange blossom beers, Debbie and I's favorite beer. This is with the 45. F35 wide open. Uh, if you go to the website, you can see these files in much larger versions. It's kind of hard to tell on YouTube, of course, but you can see the color fidelity here. Another one from the same location with the sun shining in through the glass block. Uh, the colors are phenomenal, uh, very rich, uh, a step up from most 35 millimeter full frame cameras. Uh, it doesn't give you any kind of flat look, even with that F35 lens. Uh, this is just a silly shot of a chair. I just wanted to see the detail of all the scratches uh, and the light green color. It produced the color very nice. Uh, it wasn't an exciting scene. Uh, there wasn't really good light hitting it. The next picture, again, another silly one of me, a reflection of me, Debbie in the background, in uh, an Airstream trailer. Um, sometimes I just do weird stuff. And again, I was testing it as an everyday walk around camera. The camera's so light, it's lighter than the SL, lighter than my A9 if you especially throw a G Master lens on it, um, but it's built to a very high standard. 
Now here's uh, four shots of local graffiti just to test the color. This is full Arizona midday sunshine. The dynamic range handles it without an issue, which is something I'm not used to. I usually avoid going out uh, and shooting around town because of that direct sun is so harsh for most cameras and most cameras give me flat looking images in this light you know we all know we search for the golden hour that golden light well with this i was shooting at midday in phoenix and bringing back phenomenal colors and phenomenal tonality uh, you don't see any blown highlights in these shots of these murals even though full sun was hitting it the next one is uh, really cool. You'll see the vibrant colors uh, come to play here. This was a mural we walked by as we walked down uh, the Roosevelt area, Roosevelt Row. And look at the colors and the detail and the shadows. And again, this was just midday in Phoenix, Arizona. So the X1D really gives out a nice file. It's better than I am, you know, so it's something I can grow and learn with. Now here's Last night, uh, more low light shots I shot at the Lost Leaf in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Fifth Street and Roosevelt, one of my favorite little clubs to go to and shoot local music. They have live bands 365 nights a year. Uh, I shot this band last night with the X1D, ISO 25600 for most of these shots. Uh, there were a couple that went a little lower. But again, I wanted to test it with more of a band that's going to move around more because the last time I tested it, that band was an acoustic kind of band, mellow, and they just sat around and played. So these guys moved around quite a bit. Um, and the X1D, again, this shot reminds me of a film shot. Uh, the tonality of it, the dynamic range, the noise, pretty cool. Here's a little, uh, I added some contrast to this one because I'm not sure which I like better, the low contrast or the high contrast. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm digging more the lower, but it, sometimes I like the higher. Now the Lost Leaf, as I've explained in previous videos and articles, you pretty much have this glaring red light that most cameras have a very hard time with. A lot of cameras will blow out the highlights uh, or oversaturate the reds, and uh, I usually have to convert them to black and white with the X1D. It was handling that red color very well, though I do like the gritty feel of black and white when shooting these kinds of scenarios. This was ISO 25600, maxed out, uh, so I couldn't go any faster on the shutter speed, but it was cool because I caught the motion of him wailing on his guitar, pretty cool. Um, here's the singer, again, it's a little dark, uh, but you know, I'm just messing with the editing. You can kind of go in any direction that you want to go with these files because they are so, so hardy. Next shot, you will see a full color shot. The guitarist was really getting into it. This was a cool band, actually. They um, were kind of like punk rock, rock kind of style, but they had some really catchy tunes, original tunes, so I really enjoyed the show. The next shot I toned down the color in editing uh, just to see what kind of vibe that would give me. So as you can see the X1D went with me throughout the day, shot some murals, shot uh, portraits, and uh, shot some more low light scenes. Uh, part 4 of my review will feature landscape in Sedona at Oak Creek Canyon with a new vlog video with Debbie and I where I talk more about the camera, show the camera's menus and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. If you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you for going to stevehuffphoto.com and this YouTube channel, which I am currently going to be adding many more videos to, as you will see. Uh, so thank you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.